last five NBL games, LaMelo continued to show off his elite ability as a pick and roll passer, hitting his teammates with a variety of passes like that lob and this sweet pocket pass to the roller. Ball has the ability to hit these one-handed hook passes on the move, which makes it difficult for the defense to get a hand on the ball. And his height allows him to see over the defense, as he shows here on the screen rescreen pass to the roller. And this is why fans love the kid so much. Melo brings out the sauce with the perfect behind the back pocket pass. Your team is a stretch big who likes to pop? Well, Melo has you covered there too, as he'll put the ball right in his teammate's shooting pocket. One of the reasons Lamelo's such a special passer is because he doesn't need a screen to make plays. Melo looks like the love child of Jamal Crawford and Jason Williams here, as he busts out the elite handle and timely drop-off pass to the big. This is an all-NBA read, as Melo beats his man off the bounce, collapses the defense, and fires the ball to the weak corner for the open jumper. Next, we see that hook pass Melo loves using. Holy shit, what a find on this drive. LaMelo just toys with the defense on the drive before firing off his patented hook pass to the corner. And finally, Ball shows off his touch on this perfectly placed lob to Dave Anderson. In a league where teams love pushing the ball, LaMelo will surely thrive as a transition playmaker. Melo has the rare ability to see the whole floor and does a great job getting the ball to his shooters. We yet again see that overhead hook pass as Melo gets the paint touch, collapsing the defense, leading to the wide open shot for the corner shooter. And even in transition, Ball's capable of dropping in those overhead touch passes. Melo straight up looks like Pat Mahomes here on this absolute laser hitting Boone in stride. Now, while Melo is the draft's best ball handler and passer, he did get a little sloppy at times over his last five games. Ball tries going one on four here and just gets a little too out of control. This is just a lazy, unnecessary pass. Melo has to recognize the clock in this situation and get the last possession here. And while we saw a bunch of successful hook passes earlier, we now see what happens when they don't work out. Lamelo lucks out on this second hook pass, but he needs to make sure he doesn't waste possessions at the next level. And this is a perfect example. Down almost 20 and throws a lazy behind the back pass that leads to a breakaway. He's capable of making all these passes, but again, team down big and just waste the possession. Lamelo's handle is ridiculous, but he occasionally gets a little dribble happy and he just leaves the ball out front for the defender to strip here. Again, look at the time and the score. And when LaMelo gets dribble happy in ISO situations, he can get careless. This possession shows Melo doing a lot of dribbling, but not going anywhere with a solid defender in Dang, who has the NBA length that Melo will see at a nightly level next season. Ball draws the foul here and maybe gets bailed out, but you could see how out of control he was after he picked his dribble up, getting into the shot. This is what you want to see out of an ISO possession. A few moves to get his defender's feet moving and then a quick attack to the hoop. Let's get into Melo's biggest swing skill which will decide what tier of player that'll reach. His shooting. When it goes in, it's house of highlights worthy. The problem is when ball pulls it off the bounce, it rarely goes in. Ball shot less than 20% off the bounce over his last 5 games. And he shot a lot of them, going 5 for 26 over the stretch. Teams won't feel threatened by a shot, and they'll consistently go under the screen. So at the least, he's going to have to become mediocre to make teams pay for it. But, Lamelo showed some encouraging signs over his last five games in catch and shoot situations, hitting 7 of 14. He still has some habits to clean up, like how he fades, but these situations allow Ball to stay more balanced and consistent in his form. His success here gives you hope that he could play with a guy like Trey Young if he ended up in that kind of situation. And if he could eliminate shots like this, where he's off balance and fading away, or this next shot where he hesitates to shoot off the catch before jacking up the jumper, he could become a pretty good off ball floor spacer. Now let's get into Ball's in between game, which isn't pretty at the moment. Ball does so much improvising on the court that he often doesn't know what he's doing until the last minute, leading to an awkward off-balance shot attempt. And he often throws up complete awkward junk, 
I don't even know what you'd call this weird quasi set floater. Ball gets dribble happy again here and loses focus of the shot clock before literally just tossing the ball towards the backboards. I don't know what the rim did to LaMelo, but he was trying to get it back on this shot attempt. And this is just an awareness thing, but this is the worst shot in basketball. Either take a step back behind the three-point line or attack. These are the mid-range shots that ball should be taking. Gets to a good spot on the floor, stays balanced, and knocks it down. Melo has good touch from the free throw line area, and he even has good touch on floaters from that range. And the floater will be a big shot for him until he learns to draw contact at the rim. At his height, it'll be a tough shot for defenders at the rim to guard. He just needs to not become overly reliant on it because he does take some tough attempts that'll needlessly bring down his efficiency. Let's get into LaMelo's ability to finish at the rim. When it goes in, it's super pretty, and he has the size to be efficient at the hoop. But as pretty as it looks, he doesn't have the consistent touch to match the aesthetics. Although Ball has great height for his position, he plays short, below the rim, and avoids contact. Melo is very much a finesse player, without the requisite finesse. He often will make a million dollar move and a 10 cent finish. This inability to consistently finish at the rim is why it'll be so important for Ball to not shy away from contact like he does here, but instead use his size to get to the line. And he does just that on this possession. Cradles the ball, goes into the body of the defender, feels the contact, and finishes the N1. And you love to see this. Melo doesn't have a lot of bounce, but he sees a little bit of room and goes hard to the hoop for the dunk. And again, beats his defender, attacks the hoop with aggression. The help doesn't even contest. More of this, please. And finally, I want to see Melo cut more often. He's got good timing and a quick first step on cuts, so these back doors will get him more open looks at the rim. Now, as a transition finisher, Ball has the same struggles as he does in the half court, just lacking the touch around the rim. This is the perfect opportunity to draw contact, but he avoids the contact and the ball avoids the rim. And again, when he does finish with these Kyrie-esque jellies, it looks great, but he isn't nearly consistent enough with it to bring it out of his bag as often as he does. It's only gonna get harder from here, so he's gonna have to attack more aggressively, like he does here with the slam. Over the last five games of LaMelo's NBL career, I actually thought that he got worse as a man defender. Melo got into a bad habit of reaching instead of moving his feet and was consistently blown by in route to the basket. It doesn't get more Ole defense than this possession as he actually actively puts both hands behind his back on the blow by. Ball actually does a good job beating his man to the spot here, but then he gets lazy and reaches causing a foul. If NBL athletes are having this easy a time blowing by LaMelo, what is John ja Morant or Russell Westbrook gonna do? The other area you'd have hoped he'd improve on was getting through screens, but he still had massive troubles with it. Ball just puts himself in position to get mauled by screens, and it's not going to get easier when Melo has the Gobert and Bede and Baineses of the world to look forward to at the next level. Lamelo is a bit out of control here, but this was one of his better defensive possessions. Goes under on Hampton, then avoids the double screen, rotates to the corner, and forces the ball into the help. And you love to see this. He shows he's willing to give up his body for the charge. It's a good sign. Unfortunately, Ball wasn't much better as an off-ball defender, but he did show signs of improvement over earlier in the season. But his awareness is just not there yet. You wonder why he's guarding a non-shooter like Hampton all the way at the logo here. Good rotation from the weak side to the roller here, but just a lazy swipe away instead of bodying up. Just no effort here just watches the man stroll in for an uncontested layup. Same result here, except this time he makes matters worse by lazily swiping, turning a layup into an end one. No idea here, never makes a move on the postman and just leaves his man open in the corner. Hey, a timely rotation here. Gambles for the strip, but recovers and almost forces a turnover off the double. A little late, but another solid rotation forcing the tough pass to the wing. The shooter has to hit the shot with a hand in his face. And another solid rotation to stop the penetration forcing the kick out. Ball has good length, so where he could bring value defensively is in the passing lanes. Good job on the steal, but then takes a ridiculously bad shot. 
needs to just pull that out. Again, gets a hand on the ball, getting his team back their possession. And a great job blowing up the dribble handoff here. Look, Ball is a bigger project than people think, and he's certainly a gamble. But if a team can max out his natural talents, you're looking at an all-NBA first-teamer. Thanks for watching the Hardwood Herald on YouTube. Make sure to like, comment, and hit that subscribe button.